Welcome to Golden Boy Insider. I'm your host, Bethel Duran, where we take you behind the scenes of how the fight game works. Today's guest is very, very special because he's the matchmaker at Golden Boy. So for everybody who's ever said, I can do this, I can do that, I can make a fight. Well, we're going to find out how hard it really is. Normally, we have a fighter. We get to know him a different way. But today, it's Ask a Matchmaker with Golden Boy Matchmaker, Roberto Diaz. Roberto, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. This has been a fun show that uh, Bobby Diaz and Larry have created here because we get to ask the fighters off-the-wall questions. You've seen it. And they come out with a different personality. I know when you watch this, because you were part of the reason we started doing it, because there's so much these fighters that you want to show, but it's hard in a normal press conference, isn't it? Absolutely, Beto. I mean, one of the most important things in a fighter's career is we all get to see them inside the ring. That's what we see. That's what we tune in to watch the fights. However, people sometimes don't get to know these fighters. And the more they get to know them, the more they realize how much alike these athletes are to the every everyday Joe or to all of us. You know, we all have something in common with a lot of these fighters. So that's why this show is is awesome. I appreciate you guys doing it. And I'm sure the fighters, little by little, uh, uh, start realizing how important it is. Yeah, and, you know, whether it's Ricardo Sandoval telling us that he used to work at a tire shop or whether it's Ryan telling us that he used to sell candies to go to a national tournament as an amateur, that's what we love to do because at the end of the day, we're all fight fans. You started off as one. We all start off as one. And you get in the business, and then there's fighters. You're like, you know what? You have a different perspective because a lot of times as a matchmaker, you're the only one from the company in that country with the fighters. I remember when I met you, you talking about Randy Caballero in Monaco fighting for a title. And you're looking around like, hey, is anybody, anybody on our side? What's that like when there's nobody there except for you and the fighter? You know, for, for me, well, I'm not stepping into the ring. Um, it's become, you know, second nature. Uh, I now go and I, I have to sometimes... Uh, fight for the fighter outside the ring with either the promoter, the commissions, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that everything's on an even playing field. And that to me is, is that's the fun part. Yeah. Now I get to put on the gloves outside the ring. For them, you get to know really who this fighter is and how they're built because it's one thing to fight at home and fight, fight in your comfort zone with your fight fans, with your family around. But when you're on the opposite end, you're the B-side, you're in that other country, everybody's, everything's stacked against you, you realize who the champions. Because there's two things that could happen. You either sink or you swim or, or you rise to the occasion. Yeah. And that's the fun part. When you see these kids who you started off as four rounds, as you mentioned, Randy Caballero, and recently, most recently, about a year ago, uh, El Nino Sandoval, we went to the UK, first time for him fighting. Uh, he had fought in Mexico, but really going in, even when he fought in Mexico in San Miguel de Allende, he was the house fighter. He was the A-side. We now went to uh, the, the UK, and, you know, we were treated very fair. We were treated very well. However, when it came time inside the ring, he had to prove. And, and one thing we talked about before is if you don't want regrets and you don't want to say walk away, you know, and say I won but they robbed me, what's the best way to do it? take it out of the hands of the judges. And he did exactly that. He had a very tough competitor, Jay Harris, who had one loss, and that loss was in a world title fight by decision to Ray Martinez, the current champion. And Ricardo took it out of the hands of the judges by winning by knockout. You're a matchmaker. You're also looking for talent. What does it take for you to sign somebody to Golden Boy? Well, the most important thing is talent. You know, they have to know the basics, the ABC, be able to fight. But something that personally I look for is besides knowing how to fight, which you have some tremendous fighters, do they have that extra? Do they have the discipline? Do they have that, you know, and only time will tell you that answer, but do they have that it outside the ring as well? Do they connect with the fans? Do they have, and I like to look for that because I'd like to see something just not just in the ring, but a crossover trying to make a star. And when you're a matchmaker, you're responsible for saying, I want this guy to fight this guy, but you got to line them up to get to the rankings, to get to uh, Eliminator, to get to a world title, whatever sanctioning body. I don't think people understand that it's not just, oh, we're going to do it right now. It's a three, four-year process, isn't it, for some of these young fighters? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's usually from zero to world title, I'd like to say between, and it depends on you know each each case, but i like to say, about 20 fights into the game, they should wow. be fighting for a world title, which normally 
is a five-year period from zero to, to about 20 fights. Some fighters are faster tracked because of their amateur pedigree, because of their skill level. An example, on Saturday night, you have a young man from Puerto Rico, Oscar Collazo, fighting a 12-round world title eliminator in his fifth fight. He's 4-0. and a lot of times you don't see that. Four and oh, he should be fighting six rounds, maybe even four rounds. But Oscar Collazo is a, such a gifted fighter that he's fighting a world title eliminator. Should he win Saturday, he'll be five and oh, and he will be the mandatory for the world title. So technically, he can win the world title at six fights. <sighs> and he'll become not only a world champion, of course, which is important in his dream, but even with the historic, I mean, the history of Puerto Rico, some of the greatest champions in boxing, he will have won the world title the soonest than anybody else in their career in Puerto Rico. Wow, that's impressive. That's it is, it impressive. is. But everybody has a different path. But everybody does have a different path. Sometimes injuries, setbacks, legal issues, marriages, whatever. Or they're just, you don't, you still need to see that extra, you know, to say he's ready. I said from the beginning when I started Golden Boy a long time ago, matchmaking and working with young fighters, I'm not here to build records. I'm here to build champions. I want to build champions. So if we're 18 and two, but we win the world championship, I'm proud of that. Uh, I don't want to get there 20 and 0 and lose. So mm. I'm very competitive well, but I'm also looking out for the fighters to say, are they ready, when they're ready, and let's go for it. Man, that attitude, you see it because – I mean, you're very active on Twitter, and also you see people that, oh, you're criticizing your job or whatever it is you may be. But at the end of the day, they can't say anything about the fighters that you've built because whether they go down, they always come back. And that's the thing that you've always taught me is that these guys have to have the resilience because if you lose once, it's nothing bad. It's how you bounce back, right? Absolutely. Look, uh, we've shown it in, in the past. Some of the greatest fighters in history have lost. Muhammad Ali, Hagler, Leonard, Hearns, Durand, uh, Oscar, Trinidad. They all lost. And you know what? We still talk about them. It's the modern day. You know, it worked out for Floyd. Never losing a fight, at least officially. And a lot of the young fighters that came up after Floyd said the O is the most important thing. And they want to protect that O so much. To be great. You have to dare to be great. You have to take risks. You have to fight outside your comfort zone. You could, you could be a world champion fighting the neighbor every week, and you're not going to go down in the history books. So a loss does not define a career. A loss actually can make you better, define you. Build, it builds character because you come back hungrier. Alexis Rocha took a defeat, said, Robert, I hate the feeling. I never want to go through that again. So I remind him every time he steps in the ring. You remember? Yes, I do. Okay, then go, you know, make sure it doesn't happen again. So it builds character. You learn from mistakes. You learn more from a loss than from many wins. Um, and a loss isn't going to end, end the career. In fact, fans sometimes say, hey, look, he lost and came back. That's a great story and, and follow you more. Man, good insight from Go The More Matchbreaker, Roberto Diaz. There's always a lot of fun talking to you. We could do this over and over. We're going to have to do more extra episodes here on Go The Boy Insider. Thank you Anytime. very much. Thank you, Beto. We're watching another edition of Go The Boy Insider.